to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right, praise y'all. Hallelujah, saints of the Most High. Everybody hear me all right? Yeah, the few are here. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. We just pray that the Most High I will give strength to those that are uh, enduring this. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good, no matter what we find ourselves uh, immersed in. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, saints of the Most High. Uh, let us pray, oh, blessed Heavenly Father, and want to name you sure. We're very grateful for all things. And we're grateful, Most High, uh, for you giving us strength, helping us to endure these days, Most High, that are ahead. Humbly ask, Most High, for the hearing ear, the seeing eye, Most High. Open up the understanding, the hearts, the minds of the people in this hour because they need it. We all need it, Most High. We need direction as the days even grow grossly darker, more evil. We do bless you and praise you and thank you, Most High, Yah, for always being mindful of us, watching over Pastor Sister Carol. Hallelujah. All the saints abroad, giving you honor and glory. Bless the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. I mean, y'all may be seated, saints of the Most High, Yah, and Shabbat Shalom to all those that are online. Hallelujah. All things are good, and I thank you uh, We are a people of life. We are a people that are always producing. Our minds are always gendered towards that which is good, gendered towards life and not death. Our thoughts always should be toward Him because we need to stay in peace. We need peace this time and this hour because, you know, this year is turning out to be quite a year already. And there's more to come. And as we see these things approaching, we see with, with amongst ourselves that still, you know, as uh, the world is immersing itself in fear and doing everything they can, you know, to run from it, even though they're enslaved by it. Ugh. The saints of Yah, even in Israel, there still is a fear even though there are a lot of people coming to this, you know, and they see the landscape and what's going on in the world, and it's kind of propelling a lot of people to come this way. But in the same token, it's propelling a lot of people to leave, to exit. I've been hearing the stories, and I'm like, my God, why are people wanting to depart from life? Depart from life, and that's the message today. It's going to have a title. It'll be called Exiting Life. As the Most High Yah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, He is the ministry. And we are His children, we are His servants, we are the ones that have been called to this time. As really, if you look at it, there has no, been no time on the face of the earth as it, has, as it is now. We see the words of this, this book before us really, really becoming more vivid as the days go on. I think the Most High God that He's so mindful of His children that He does not have us to be ignorant. So when these things come upon the face of the earth, we're not a fearful people. It should not be a fearful people. 
especially if we have a hope in us, his hope as an anchor to our mind, our will, and our emotions. Because it's evident as the days go on, and I'm learning this, without him I can do nothing. Even the very basic decisions. You know, I rely on the Most High God to help me do the right thing. Make the right decisions. Because as soon as we wake up, we're, we're into judgments, we're into this, we're into that. But a lot of decisions go on at the waking moments and the lying down of the head. And even while we're sleeping, a lot of decisions are taking place. This thing is getting very, very real, very, very uh, in living color, if I can say that word. Even for the saints of the Most High, oh, this thing is just becoming, even in my eyes, more marvelous day by day. We've got an administration that's over this country now that's, oh, I, words can't describe it. Things are just getting more vile, more disgusting, more degraded. Uh, but it must needs be. she has got to come. Got to burn up something, huh? Got to send someone to hell. You know, words went forth, you know, and it's going to accomplish what it's set forth to do. It's been written from the beginning and it, uh, the, the structure is there and uh, everything that man in his intellect and his inventions he's trying to go against the, the very structure everything was created in there's an order of the most high eye even though they don't want to acknowledge him in it and everything that order still is going to stay solid it's going to remain till he he says no more oh hallelujah hallelujah where it says for what is a man profited as it see, you know, we're living in a world of buying and selling anymore. And we've got this, this system that's been here, the beast system. And there's going to come a time where the people of Yah are going to have to stay with their seal. And the people of the world are going to get their mark. And no man can buy or sell save that he had the mark of the name or the number of the beast. So what is a man profited? What is real profit? Temporal profit or eternal profit? For what is a man profit if, if he shall gain what? This whole world. A lot of people are just wanting to have every piece of the world that they can have. But what if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own what? Soul, his mind, his will, and emotions. I've seen a lot of people that's been in this walk and the call of the world came and then it pulled them out in it. And I watched their mind, their will, and their emotions Everything about them just go to naught. So for what is a man profit if, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange? We've, we've been the people that's been here for so many years. We've seen a lot of people exchange their soul for just the smallest of matters. A small disagreement, a small envy, a small bitterness. Give that in exchange for your mind, your will, and your emotions. This thing is something else. Lose your mind, lose your will, lose your emotions. What will you exchange for your mind? What will you exchange for your will? What will you exchange for emotions? But the, the key word is your mind. Now if we're dead and hid with Christ and Yah, 
then it's no longer our mind no more, is it? And if we're living in Him and, and confess Him as Master and Savior, then it's His will. Then in everything that we, that we walk in this walk, our motions are uh, governed. Our motions are mastered by Him and His Word, right? So well, who will exchange for their mind, their will, their emotions? How many of the saints of Yah abandoned your own mind the way that you used to think? Walk and talk. The things that you, your will that you wanted. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to do it that way. And whatever it may be. And the emotions that are controlled by temporal things. And there's only two that we can serve in this world, there's, there's nothing beyond this construct. There's nothing beyond what has been made by the Most High Eye. You're either going to serve Yah or you're going to serve Satan. You're either going to have the mind of Satan, the will of Satan, or the emotions of Satan. This, 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 this Hasatan, this one who want to be like the Most High Yah, he knows even more at this hour his time is even shorter. So what must he must do knowing that this fear is welling up in him more and more and more and more by day by day? He's got to impart it on someone, doesn't he? And because he knows his days are shorter and the fear is wrapping then we can see the world going after his fear, going af after his, his shortness. That's why the people are just so disarray. I got to do this. I got to do that. Everything's fast here. Everything's fast there. What is out there on the world market that you would peddle your soul for? And again, it's, it's sad to say, but part of our testimony, we have seen many people come into this walk, had relationship with them, loved them, cared for them, to watch them, you know, to, to backhand you, to betray you, your love and everything. Watch them just sell their soul for a morsel of the world. Go back and have the testimony. Oh, I've got to live my life. So what is out there on the world market that you would peddle your soul for? Don't you understand or do you understand that this world has been judged temporal? And it can't get out of these bonds, out of these realms? The Most High God's Word has just deemed it so. Soon as sin entered into the world and death by sin, it became temporal. Either we're going to deem ourselves as a temporal being, or we're going to deem ourselves as the way the Most High Eyes deemed us, as eternal. Or are we going to embrace the second death with colors? Are we going to walk this walk as He walked? Triumph him over death, where death has no more dominion over us. But many in, in, in Israel still has dominion over them. When we should have let life, life, his life, continually overshadow us, immerse us. Because it's no longer our mind that should be in action now. Real life is in this word. Watching Pastor Dow's YouTube video from yesterday, and he had this prophet come in the room. He's a prophet, he should know all things, right? You know. Come in the room and ask, Pastor, do you do you believe in the New Testament and the Apostles' Doctrine? I was like, Pastor, too, when I first saw that, I was like, what? <laughs> like, like, I 
guess this, this, this so-called Christian prophet, whoever he has deemed himself to be, hadn't listened to pastor at any time. I don't know what gives him the authority or thinking that he can ask a question such as that after pastor has been going on pretty much teaching and, and trying to guide the people in the, in, into understanding the times of head and what they should do. Talking, you know, about getting together and growing your own food, getting your own land, doing this, doing that, becoming an agricultural people. And still this, this so-called prophet couldn't even hear. Believing, you know, up here, you know, you can believe in anything up here. A lot of people can believe in the New Testament and the Apostles' Doctrine up here. But the true rubber hitting the road is living it. Living it. Actually letting that word become a living word. This word to a lot of people is not living. Because they don't believe it to the point of you know, letting it cause their hands to do this, their feet to do that. Their whole being to, do, to be moved with its instruction. Moved with its precepts. Moved with everything that it, it desires to instruct you to do. But we got to understand that this world, we're in the world, but we're not of it. That this world has been judged temporal. Look at the temptation of Yeshua. It says in Matthew 4 8, again, the devil, the Hasatan, taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and he showed him. All the kingdoms of the world. Oh, but at that time, that was pretty, probably pretty magnificent, huh? And the glory of them. I don't know what the Hasatan's doing to some saints and some minds at this time and this hour, taking them up to different places and showing them things that they could have or a life that they could live. You ain't got to do all that sacrifice. You ain't got to do all that loving. You ain't got to do all this. And you ain't got to do it. Look what I got. I can give you this. But even this, this Hasatan made by Yeshua HaMashiach going to tempt his Creator Again, the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee. And pretty much he had dominion over all these things to give. And he's, If thou will what? Fall down and worship me. A created being telling the one who created to bow down and worship him. Wow. Wow. And such so are the same things today. Devil comes to many, promise them a lot of stuff. If you just get out of that, 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 that truth way, you get out of all that obedience and all, all that worship. Verse says, for the all that is in the world. Where is it in? In, in, in. All that is that the world embodies its substance. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust. What well, about the lust of what? The flesh. And the lust of what? The eyes. And the pride of life. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. Satan's marketing system, his advertising is to appeal to what? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Just even the M3 alone, he, he has such a world market that he can just go and sell his wares in. If you look at the book of Revelation, everything's hinging on buying and selling. I'm like, Man, what kind of world we live in. This realm of commerce. 
or exchanges of monies. And then we got the same thing on the spiritual side. There's still a market going on more the so in the realm of the spirit. Or people are peddling their souls for little morsels of crap and shit. And I'm like, what in the world is Hasatan? What is he pitching in our minds and in our hearts for us to, you know, to, to give up a way of life, a way of love, a way of peace, a way of long-suffering, a way of gentleness, a way of meekness. For so how many thousands of years, the Hasatan's lie of him giving you an a more abundant life. But he forgets to tell you that it won't be long. There is a price. You want all these things? Yeah, bow down and worship him. Become a slave to him. This should not even be so in Israel. I would love to see us go through a dead season of no one departing. Even what the dead season should, if anything, cause us to cleave more to him. A very, very, very action, a very needful hope, a needful love that the saints of Yah really, really need to put purpose themselves in more as the hour approaches is cleaving to their Elohim. We're cleaving too much, too much other crap. We tell you there is something in us to always want to lean toward the temporal side of things. Somehow, some way, we've been convinced that the, if we don't get it now, we won't get it at all. Come on, get it, get it, get it. Your life needs it. A lot of the things that we think we need, we don't need. Been this thing pretty much half my life, and I really understand how much the Most High Yah wants to supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. But there's so, been so much mistrust, so much doubt, so much unbelief still peddled on the market of the Spirit. Hard for people to enter in, in, into this solace, enter into this comfort, enter into this confidence that, he, that the, the, the Creator of all living wants to give His children. We shorten His hand too much on too many occasions of how he wants to express himself to the children. We're still too grown up. We don't stick on the form of the child where the father can actually move into the role he desires to move into for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These three things... He desires to make a cell of you. These avenues here, these channels, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, everything that's tied to this earth. He wants you to, you know, to give everything to your dirt, your dirt desires. And when you look at it, I mean, it's a testimony to ourselves when we look at it day by day. We're not getting no younger. Look at this thing, he's got to be getting more pains and breaking down more, and it's just not consistent. Like when I was in my youth, and now you know my mind was not on these things, you know. My mind was known the next generation. My mind was on my generation. But now as age has brought on a maturity, experience has brought on more understanding and knowledge. I'm glad that the changing of the mind, the conforming to His image has taken more place in my life and your lives. Because if everyone wants to know the true, true life, true image of living, it's through Him. It's never been outside of Him. 
Hasatan does not want you to have life. He, don't want to, don't, he does not want you to have the mind of Yah. He is scared of your power. He's scared of his power. And everything he can to, to thwart that and, and to squash it down and hold it back, he will do it. He will peddle it. He will sell it. Job 27.8 For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Notice that word there, hypocrite. The stage player. Though he hath gained when Yah taketh away his soul. Hmm. So the most high I intervenes, it takes away the mind, the will, and the emotions. And the hypocrite has allowed himself into this position. So what is his hope after hope is taken away from him? Everything he had gained when he loses his mind, his will, and his emotions, what is left? Will Yah hear his cry? That hypocrite? Will Yah hear the hypocrite's cry when trouble comes upon him? Will he delight himself in the honor? Will the hypocrite after all of that, after that is removed, after he allowed himself to be disclosed, disinherited? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon Yah? I would say not. I would say not, saints. What is, again, Luke 9, 25, for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world? And lose himself? Or be cast away? How many of us can really fathom of being away from the Father? Being out of His presence. Out of His love. Out of His mercy. This far in our walk. I've seen people in this 10, 15 years just throw it all away. And I'm like, why? 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 Why could you not continue in the maturing? Why you let some envy and some bitterness keep you from going to the next level? Why you let these little small matters just overwhelm you and pile drive you and come off from the top rope, top rope with an elbow down on your mind? Promising you some kind of liberty. Who wants to gain that mess out there? We've been pulled out of that darkness. You know, this is part of our testimony, saints of the Most High. Yah. Must needs be you all went through that. That was tailor made for you, child of Yah. But now, Galatians 4 9. After that, you have known Yah, or rather are known of Yah. And it says, How turn you again to the weak? I looked at this verse so many times because of this, this little phrase here. Turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements. I'm like, What? To be known of Yah. And know Yah, know of His goodness, partake of, of His love, His peace, His gentleness, everything that He is, life. <laughs> and you turn again to the weak and what? Beggarly, beggarly elements. And then where until you, you have a desire again to be in bondage? Many of us have come out of bondage. And I look, you know, I use that as a backdrop not to look back, but it, you know, as something to propel me not to go that way again. That was pain enough. That, was, that experience was enough to propel me to keep me 
in, in every aspect of not returning back to that crap, that vomit. A lot of us went through a lot of crap and it was in, in, in vivid living color beyond high definition. Everything is beyond definition when, when it's you involved in the, the, that experience. But I thank God to, that I went through those experiences so that I come out of that to get to Him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This beggarly, Greek word, 4434. Talks of, uh, whatever that word is, talk of, reduced to beggarly, begging, asking alms, destitute of wealth, influence, position, honor, lowly afflicted, destitute of the virtues and eternal riches, Helpless, powerless to accomplish an end. And I'm thinking, these go back to these, these things that are just nothing. Things that, that, that offer nothing. The, all these aspects of death. Weak and beggarly, return to weak and beggarly elements. Turning back to those things that keep you sick. Turning back to those things that keep you in bondage. Keep you in fear. Keep you in want. Keep you in hopelessness. In despair. In hatred. In uncertainty. In pain without life. Trying to understand why the Most High I was... Delivered this message to me to deliver, and I'm like, hey, somebody out there amongst the ministry must be teetering. Must be people that are looking into this that need to have a, an understanding to, to have those things that we have experienced as an ex that we can actually give our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of our experience. So that they don't have to go through the experience of those that we have seen depart. We've seen a lot of loved ones depart from many old matters. Like Pastor said, we've seen none of them show us a greater way. Now you got to look on social media and you get to see, you know, the, their makeup of death and their makeup of despair and, and now all they get to, to give homage to is their pain and their hurts. You should not bring back out into death. You should not have trade your soul back for temporal things. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. One thing the saints of the Most High are, you got to let your past go. I don't know how many times we've tried to herald this and broadcast this and propel this. We, you know, up here ministering the Word, trying to implore, knowing the terror of Yah, and what we must do to, you know, to get this into the mind and the hearts of the people. To quit looking back at your past life, your past hurts, your past experiences. Let that shit go. And someone might be online saying, oh, he cussed. Listen to the spirit that I'm speaking in. That's why many of you just think so carnally, think so temporally. You don't understand what the messenger is trying to, to even reach unto you in a message. Many people come into this ministry full force and everything like we have seen many times before get pulled away by something so just... Uh. No man having his, put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yah. 
The old song used to say, keep your hand on that plow and hold on. Because we think, you know, we're doing all the work when we've not done really no work at all, but we've entered into a one man's work. We entered into Yeshua HaMashiach's work. We accepted His love. We accepted His sacrifice. He's the one that gave us the ability to, to put our hands on the plow. He was the one that made the plow. He was the one that made the field, made the dirt, everything in it. And gave us the opportunity to learn, to understand what we were truly created for. I, he said He's life. He was life in the beginning. And, and trying to get the people of Yah to embrace life has been something else. So many millennia and millennia and millennia and millennia of people embracing death. That's, 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 that's we think within ourselves that's all we got to gravitate to. Which we don't. I am embracing life and we should be embracing life more day by day by day. And we've got unsaved family members that we're still trying to grope for and to cleave to. Let them go. Let them go. Bye, Saranara. They ain't desiring to add nothing to you. You that are coming in this walk, get ready for the family test. Get ready for the sword. We'll see, you know, if you, can, if you can pass this test of offense. Do you want a fake family? Or do you want a true family? A real family? Thing that all your life that you've been really wanting that you never got from your family. True love, true peace, true comfort. Of loving one another. The ability to love one another has been given to us by Yeshua HaMashiach. Because we did not know how to love one another except He loved us first. Being the first fruits. Fruits. First fruits. And He desires us to be fruitful and multiply. So let us continually as saints, if you're in this, keep your hand on the plow. Do not give up hope. Because the things ahead are going to try hope. They're going to try patience. As you reread in the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach, here is the patience of the saints. Those that keep the commandments of Yah and love not their lives. I wonder why they love not their lives. They were too busy loving another life. They're too busy and immersed in His life. And because the mind, the will, and the emotions are immersed in His life, His love, then their life is hid with Christ and Yah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank Yah to hide this new life in Christ. When the world looks at us, caught. They don't understand how we live. We're in a house, you know, like everything going on in the world. The world is uproar and fear and tumult and whatever it may be. And the saints of Yah are at peace still, loving one another, giving to one another, still producing the world looks at how are they able to do that? When they're, they're looking on their own, only on their own life, they can only pull from what they can pull from. English Standard Version says this, but now that you have come to know Yah, or rather to be known by Yah, how can you turn back again? to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world. 
whose slaves you want to be once more? How many of us have desired to be a slave of the world again? I don't see no hands. You know, we say that now when, when, when the trying comes. Will, will our testimony be rooted and anchored? Because there's things that are going to try us in this walk. Yeshua himself, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind as Christ suffered. Oh, not that word again. Suffer? Suffer? But we have a different mind. The people of Yah have a different mind of suffering. Because we know we're suffering as He suffered and suffering for Him and suffering one another. These things are suffering. This is part of real life. We're going to really strengthen love amongst ourselves. We will suffer one another. We're going to suffer anything. Let us suffer as being good soldiers. We're going to suffer. Suffer as one that is down on his knees, crying out to the Most High Yah, who is his sufficiency daily. True, real suffering that is there to bring more fruit. Some, sometimes suffering is there to prune us back. But the Most High Yah has subjected the same in hope. We all, the people of Yah, always subjected in hope. Because He wants us to grow, to grow, to grow. But many times we will not allow Him to bring this a lead and teach and guide us as a father. Or too much being adult so many times of the week. We don't just don't acquiesce ourselves to being a child of Yah. How many times we read in the Word, especially in 1 John, little children, little children, little children. Do we sit back and just meditate? Why? All the time you're calling us little children because we are His little children. And he wants to always be a father. Always wants to be a father to His children. And that's a beautiful thing if we would allow Him to be a father. If He needs to any time chastise us, rebuke us, reprove us, take it patiently. Let it know it's for your good, for your betterment, for your growing, for you to be a better servant of Yah. For you to understand and enter life more abundantly. Too many people forsake the abundant life so much. Might be at the edge, getting ready to come out of their trial. Trying to get, you're getting ready on the edge of just getting out of their temptation and they fold it all in. And they, and they forsake the reward of not being able to suffer that. I like the rewards of some of the sufferings that I've been through. A lot of the sufferings have brought me to great places of repentance. And we can say that in any one of us. Even in the little time when I was going through this, this little nasty thing that's going through. Even though my body was ravaged, you know, with the fevers and the pains and whatever was going on with it, I made sure I kept my mind on Him. In everything. Whatever was going on in my body, I was still calling on the Most High Eye. Most High Eye, what is going on? I was always looking to Him for answers. Where, where did I, where did I slip up? Where did I sin? What went wrong to where I allowed this to come into my house? I was seeking Him for answers. At the same time, seeking Him for healing, seeking Him for comfort. More than I would, you know, going to a, a pain bottle or something, you know, the apo apothecary or pharmaceuticals. And I think y'all going through this, you know, this little bug here. 
Give me a little bit closer relationship with my Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians 4, 9 from the Scriptures. But now after you have known Elohim, or rather are known by Elohim, how do you turn again to the weak and poor elementary matters to which you wish to be enslaved again? I mean, it's, it's going back in this world, it's calling it a pile of crap. Calling it is nothing. Why do you want to go back to that mess? Here I am, the Heavenly Father, I put your feet, you know, as hinds feet in high places. I put you far above all this mess. And you want to look down and look back and go back to it? Ecclesiastes 7.29 Lo, this only have I found. The preacher said that Yah hath made man upright. That was his purpose for making him. But they have sought out many inventions. It seemed like, you know, as we read through the annals of time, annals of history, through this word here, how man has sought from going from a two-legged creature to a four, four-legged beast. In this time, in this hour, and we got... Here we are as people of the Most High Eye looking upon the world seeing that, that the beast system is alive and kicking and growing stronger day by day. Whew. We see when we are made man upright. Well, we can see in our time and hour how, how much of these inventions that man loves to create to, to stay out of the obedience of the one that made them. It's amazing. Let's go to 2 Peter. Chapter 2. Hallelujah. Start at verse 18 through 22. It says, For when they... And I'm going to talk about this from a spiritual level. I'm talking about from demonic spirit level. For when they, talking about these demonic spirits, speak great swelling words, you know, as pastors are talking about these vipers, you know, it ain't the two-legged creatures that's actually in play here, but it's actually something motivating two-legged creatures to go and spit in people's ears. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, what kind of words? Words of just nothing. They allure through the lust of the what? Oh, they're, they're out there doing this, buying and selling, huh? Flesh merchants. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through one much wantonness. A lot of people are too much idle in this hour. Those that were clean escaped from them that lived in air. Whoa! They speak great swelling words of end. They lure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, that those were clean escaped from those that lived in So you got one that living in error. Want to take the one who was clean escaped out of the way, huh? And it says, while they promised them liberty, those that live in there are these spirits. They promised many liberties, huh? They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought into bondage. So the very thing that, that lusted, somehow this, this, this demon, this, this merchant was sold them that, the very thing that they desire and that they purchase, now they're overcoming, overcome again and brought into bondage of that very thing which they purchased. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world 
And how do you escape through the pollutions of the world? And it says right here, through the knowledge of the Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. They have escaped. They again entangle therein. They are again entangled therein. They have escaped. But they went to the world market. And they went and bought that bitterness. They went and bought that envy. They went and bought that jealousy. Man, you don't need to be under the, 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 the teaching of that man. He, you know, he, he's up there angry. Listen at him. Look at him preach. He's angry. And he's preaching at you. He, he, he don't like you. He don't love you. Just come over to, come over to here and you won't have to hear that, 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 that Elohim in your ears. You won't have to hear of his love and hear of his peace and hear of his long suffering. You won't, you won't have to sacrifice no more. You won't have to give up this and you won't have to give up that, you know. If, you know, I know what your flesh wants. I know what your flesh needs and, and I know what your soul desires. Come over here and he opens up his coat. <coughs> Shows you all his wares and then the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of your life starts speaking. Then you come over here and you take all these words. You know, you can be free from him. You remember that life that you once had? You remember that time that you were sitting back, kicking it up with the boys? Six packs here and there, little joint here and there, little pop this, little pop that, little needle here, little. Remember how you felt? How how the world just escaped from you? Remember how you felt? But but the burger won't tell you when when you come down. How'd you feel afterwards? Trying to, trying to give you a picture of that abundant life. Whew. This war's real, saints. It is very, very, very real. While they promise you liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Master and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Who wants to go to a, a worser end? Going into judgment knowing that you walked in His graces. You walked in His mercy. You partake of His love and His peace and His long-suffering and you turned your back on that. Look at you are at the great white throne and this was your life. You might not have thought it was in living color then, but when you're getting ready to step off into eternity and and that, and that, that big screen is there in full vision. And you know that judgment is already set in yourself. You're going to a lake of fire. Like Pastor kept saying over in the video, many a times trying to, you know, just pound it into people's hearts, into people's minds. You only have one life to live. You're going to have one time to do this. Or are you going to get it right? Or are you going to live the true and living life? Or are you going to go ahead and go back and, and, and continue to live the lie that the God of this world has, has, has propelled? Don't forget He wanted to be like the Most High Yah. We forget that. So everything that He's doing in governments and everything, He thinks He's going to be like the Most High Yah. But he don't have the spiritual fortitude. He has no love. He has no peace. He has no long suffer, no meekness, no gentleness, none of the aspects of life. 
All that he can peddle is what embodies him is death. 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 It's all we see out there upon the world. Many times I call it the death culture. And here we are, we can put on a nice little shirt that says culture. Do we really understand what our culture is? Our culture pertains everything to life, everything living, everything just, pure, and righteous. Is this difficult? Oh, hallelujah. And the word says grievingly, for it had been better for them to not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. And it says, but it happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that it was washed to her wallowing in the mire. I mean, them are vivid, really vivid, vivid examples there. Many of us, how many of us seen a dog throw up? And then later come back to it and then sop it back up, eat it back on the like, oh, cool. Oh. Why? You know, even seeing that, and you, you even hurling within yourselves. Consider yourselves the same way to go back to a vomit of just nothing? A vomit of hating? A vomit, uh, a vomit of hopelessness? A vomit of not knowing? Vomit of fear? To go back to that mess out there in the world? Again, in Hebrews 6, 4, for it is in what? Impossible for those who were once enlightened. You know, everything we've been talking about is people that have been in this and they've forsaken it. So much word on this. But it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. A lot of us have seen this so many times. And have tasted. What? The good word of Yah. And of the powers of the world to come. I'm like, man, who wants to depart from this? <laughs> Been in this so much, I'm so addicted to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Real power. I mean, many people are forsaken. <sighs> mm, powers of the world to come? Mm. If they shall fall away, says to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they had crucified to themselves, they crucified to themselves, the Son of Yah afresh? How can that he only died once? Why should he die twice for the same person? And put him to an open shame. Because guess who's beholding the one that has tasted the word of Yah? The world. The world looking at you. Ah, he calls himself a son of Yah. He's turned away from his drugs and his boozing and this and that, his carousing, his whoring. <coughs> now here it is ten years later and he's back in the state where he was once before. Looking on, ha, 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 I thought you were, were a child of the king. And he's worse more and now the drugs tangled more in the boozing and the whoring and whatever it may be. 
Hasatan in the world just pointing down, just laughing. Putting what the work of Christ done in that man to an open shame. Word says in Luke, when the unclean spirit, what kind of spirit? Unclean spirit is gone out of a man. This spirit, it says, he walketh through dry places. He's restless. Seeking what? But the boy had it and he finds none because he's going through dry places. He's going through nothing. He has no dwelling place no more. He says, I will return to do what? My house. Calling you your his house? How many habitations of devils were we in our former life? Whoo! And these the spirits, you know, they, they, they declared you as you know their possession. How many of them are still desiring to get into your house? Whence I came out. Luke 11 to him, when he cometh, he findeth it, that spirit, swept and garnished. I mean, that house is clean now. The house is looking good. The house got a new coat of paint, got new furniture in it, and the window's not broken no more. Everything's all nice and pristine, cleaned up. There ain't no more bottles laying around and broken glass and rocks and whatever it may be. But this spirit findeth it swept and garnished, that house he used to be in. It says, and he goeth and taketh him seven other spirits. How? More wicked than himself. Because he wants to get back in his house, so he's got to do anything he can to get back in his house. So he's going to try to promise some kind of liberty to you. He's got to make some kind of sale to you for you to open, open up your house unto him again. But he's going after seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And, and, and this is amazing. It says, and they enter in, I'm like, what in the world allows them to enter back in? When a man has... Allowed the Most High God to clean him up and to stand him back upright on, uh, from the, the creation that he was created in. It took him off of all fours, took him from a, a beastly state, washed his hair and washed his body and gave him good raiment to put on. And you know, and this spirit is coming back and, and casing that house and looking all around it and everything. But he, he, he's heard, heard word that, the, that, that this, this house is in wavering now. This house is looking back and desiring things of, of yesteryear. He sees that, that the, the, the owner of the house somehow is overtaking in bitterness and overtaking in hatred and overtaking in envy and whatever it may be. Now the house is unlocked. Now he has the ability to enter in and dwell there. The hymns, one plus seven makes eight. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And I've seen this word even in itself come to living color. People that were, lived one side of life come into this walk and started living his life and partaking all the goodness and fatness of the branch. And then they, they, they removed themselves from the vine. And I see, you know, nothing is getting better in their lives. I see them in a worser state than before when they entered into it. And I was like, whoa. I have to sit back and consider myself. I mean, this is, this, is, this is a word of soberness here. 1 Corinthians 10.
It says, moreover, brethren, I would not, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the, and in the sea. Many of us in this ministry, and my, my, many people might get upset at this saying, but a lot of us were baptized under Pastor Dow. Because it's by his servanthood, by his humility, by his doing the work of the Father, he pulled many of us out. He humbled himself to speak a word, a word of deliverance to bring us out of our former state. And we're all baptized unto Moses. And we've, I, I, can, I can clearly say I was baptized unto Pastor Dow, and I am very glad that I did. There was a time that when... Whenever all my gods and all my mighty ones were in a pile of ashes right below my feet, me, wife, few children were left out with only the clothes on our back. It was them times when everything become very clear. Thank the Most High God that I had a friend in band when we were doing our heavy metal bang your head crap. He was the lead singer. And he grew up with Pastor Charles Dow. He grew up with Chucky Dow as, as, as it was known then. And was friends with him. He had come home one night from band practice and it was about like 1 a.m. in the morning. He lived at a place in Madison, like a, it is an apartment complex, and he noticed uh, Chucky Dow out there uh, preaching to the uh, drug dealers. 1 a.m. in the morning. So I get, he went and inquired, you know, like, hey, I ain't seen you know whatever happened then. And through him, I thank the Most High God that he gave me an invitation to come to a Bible study. See, all that time I was going to a Pentecostal church, going here and there, laying on the floor in, in a church of, I don't know what is a Baptist church or something, and I was laying on the floor, you know, because my, my mind and my heart at that time, after all my mighty ones and all my gods were burned out from up, under me, things were made clear to me whom I must serve now. If it wasn't for, you know, that event, and we wouldn't prevail the events ahead. You know, if I wouldn't let, you know, let, come back and look at the situation and the experience and let it speak to me. As things really spoke to me at that time, a lot of things have spoken to a lot of us before we come into this walk. A lot, a lot of things we suffered when we're getting situation upon situation upon situation, and like, when is it going to end? Like doors being shut here and doors being shut there all of a sudden. Then on, and then on this hindsight of the walk, you understand now the reason why you went through these things to get you to Him. All these things were happening. It, and it was an exodus experience at that time, even for me and for a lot of people. But it was good, very good. And I thank my Most High Yah for awakening my dumb butt whew, out of sleep, getting me away, me away from my desires and, and my aspirations. Let me know that, hey, I got a purpose for you. Let me know that he was Elohim and that I was a, a child of his. And I was constrained at that time. I had nothing else to cleave to. And I think the most I when he allowed my conscience and my understanding to, to, to be 
immersed in knowing that He was a provider. That He desired now to clothe me, to house me, to feed me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. And we're all on this journey together. Especially in this ministry. And there's a rock still with us. Hallelujah. That we are continually drinking from. No new thing under the sun. That which has been shall be again. And I thank the Most High I for it, where He takes first that which is natural, then that which is spiritual, and then brings them together, and then it makes a complete, it makes a whole. It's a beautiful, it's a marvelous thing that the Most High I is doing in our eyes. And we just step out of ourselves and just take time to meditate and, and to look into His life and His love and everything that He is. Too much looking out into that world as our people of old. They got a king. We need a king too. We got a king. Hallelujah. We do. We've got a husband. Oh, hallelujah. And we should not be ashamed to call him husband. Not be ashamed to call him king. Because we are not of the people of this hour that should visit the things that have been. That rock was Christ. But with many of them, Yah was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. And we see many people overthrown in this walk. And it says, Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. It says, Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Because of fornication, whoa! Within the body, that body at that time, same thing can happen now within the body. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. And it says, neither murmur, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. All these things happened to us for examples. And they are written for our admonition. And then the last phrase is so impactful. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Here we are at the end of the world. Everything that we read, this, in the former things that they did, let it not be performed in our time. Because as they erred, we prevail. We have the insight now. We are not ignorant. As they murmured and complained, and we see everything, that, that the reward of the murmuring and complaining brought them into being, should we perform the same things and then we're be ta overtaken by serpents? Upon whom the ends of the world are come. I'm, I looked at that and I'm like, man, this thing is greater in many ways that I, that I don't even understand yet. And here we are, the people of Yah, in this time and this hour, to be a, a, an ensign to the world. To be an example unto the nations. 
Only one, only, Most High has only called one nation to bring back the truth. One nation to bring back the life. Everything that was good in the beginning, He has put in our hands. We are now the body of Christ. And we've got to be the witnesses now against them. Gotta understand without wavering that there's a war going on. This war has been going on from the beginning. You've been called into this war. You've been called into this war. Why you consider it a small thing? Why you let the offense take you out of this wonderful war? Well, I don't know. The pain. Well, your mind is going back to your former years, huh? You look at pain in the wrong way. Yeshua. You don't think He he felt in in that mortal body much pain? Well, what was greater than that pain? The children that Yah had given Him. So we all may have pains and things in us wanting to divorce itself. Well, what is, should be greater than that pain? The love of Yah. The love of Yah. We, we, we all sit here as brothers and sisters. Each and every day we can see each and every one's failures and shortcomings and Whatever it may be, they're not measuring up to this mark, you know, and here we are judges one of another. What should even prevail in this relationship? Because where the most high eye sees us as we are. But he does not bring down the hard hammy stick hammer stick. Just because, you know, we have these certain failures and these certain weaknesses. But I've seen, you know, through my walk that even though He knows everything about me, and doing this, He's providing a need for me that I no longer should, that that He's providing, and He has provided a way of escape that I should no longer have that that weakness or should have no longer have that, that imperfection. Because He desires each one of us to be perfect. He says, be perfect as I am perfect. So you want to be perfect? Let me perfect you. Stay constantly in my hands. Let the water of the Word, let me pour the water of the Word. There might be a lump in you that's got to come out. But I don't know if I want the Most High God to squeeze that lump. I I don't know if I want to be a, a, a coffee cup in the hand of Yah. I don't know if I'm going to be a drinking water glass in the hand of Yah. Many people just forsake the potter's wheel. They think the Most High is going to make them something that they don't want to be. So they forsake the potter's wheel, forsake the potter's hand, forsake the potter's water, forsake the potter's care that he takes carefully to mold a vessel for his use. Yeah, that clay has got to sit there and go round and round and round. And it's got to suffer. It's got to suffer the pinching and the pounding and the molding. I thank Yah. And I welcome Yah's hands continually in this life. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 These things happened unto them for examples and they were written for our admonition. And Most High Yah allowed that to happen for us. For us. For us, the, the great cloud of wickedness that's even before us. And we won't forsake, you know, everything that they've done. Yeah, we see their fail. We see David's failures. It's written. We still love Him. We see Abraham's failures and shortcomings. And it's written of Him. 
but we still love him. When we get up then into, into glory to meet all the heavenly hosts, are we going to be reminding each other of our failures and, and our shortcomings? But, but, but I think, I think our, our, our conversations will be all about the victories and the overcomings. Everything that Yah has done. We're going to be speaking about many triumphs. And it's sad, many people don't even continue in this walk to build up triumphs. Everybody likes speaking of their losses and, 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 and all their misfortunes. I think, you know, it brings greater life when one is able to speak of his victories and his triumphs and, and his overcomings. And then he knows that he ain't done this of himself, but he knows there's a greater one living in him, helping him to overcome, helping him to triumph. I, mm, praise Yah. And sample can mean an example in, in the technical sense, the pattern in conformity to which a thing must be made. It says in an ethical sense, a dissuasive example, a pattern of warning. It says of ruinous events which serve as admonitions or warnings to others. It's amazing all oh, through this book you can see the potter's hands continually working and forming. From Genesis to Malachi, the potter's hands is on the wheels. And then the manifestation of what was on the wheel. Yeshua HaMashiach becomes flesh. Most people come into this walk and some who have been in it for a while with relics. We'll talk about relics. Relics, you know, things that we've brought on this superfluity of naughtiness. These things that, that have somehow remained over from the old man. These relics, emotional pains from the past, meaning hurts, betrayals, grievances, etc. Relics of bad habits, relics of mistrust, Relics of bad experiences. Relics of old self. Relics of former dreams and ambitions. Relics of our religion and doctrines. Stuff that should have been left behind. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and many people forsake the new so much. Because they love the old relics that they used to have. The old toys in the attic that used to, you know, like, like many people, you know, when they get, the devil gets them alone and starts reminding them of things of yesteryear and yesterday. You know, the, you know the Hasatan and his demons and his spirits love rummaging through your past life? They're there constantly in there dragging stuff out of boxes and then they found this one thing and they come and dangle it before your eyes. See, these relics must be gone. These relics must be relinquished. These relics should be not part of the new man. The things that Christ has imparted unto us has in no way Resemble that mess. Oh, hallelujah. There is hope continually if you stay in this fight. Many people don't learn the depths of hope because they're exiting too quick. They let pain 
spiritual pain, emotional pain, all kinds of pain shroud what the Most High God is trying to bring to them and bring them through. But there is hope. Hope is an anchor to the soul. His hope always keeps us grounded. There is hope continually if you stay in this fight. And a lot of people don't want to fight. I've seen a lot of people come in this spiritually lazy. People want to come to deliverance and get deliverance from demons and have done no work at all. Have not repented of the sin, not sinned back and went through, you know, th- th- what pieces in their life where the Spirit might have entered in. They want to come to the servant of Yah, the deliverance worker, and he's going to ask them, well, well, what do you want to be delivered from? And they reply back, I don't know, but let us go after something. That person is not going to get no deliverance. I mean, if you really want to be a partaker of the deliverance, you're going to immerse yourself in it. You've got to do a lot of groundwork first. Don't come seeking deliverance and I, I don't know what kind of spirit it is. I don't know what happened. I don't know this and that. No, you make sure when you come to get deliverance that you know what is harassing, what is driving, what is tempting you. And I'm saying that to a lot of you out there. You wonder why you ain't getting no deliverance because you ain't doing no footwork yourself. You ain't immersing yourself in that very experience. Because that very experience, if you would immerse yourself and, and do all the fur work and get all the sin and iniquity and transgression out of the way, then when you're on the victory side of it, then you can rejoice with those that helped you through it. But even rejoicing should it be more that now you have through that experience, through do you immersing yourself in that very thing, that now you have a little knowledge and understanding to help another one out of the same situation now. But no, my, no a lot of people don't want to be in this fight, don't want to be in this war. They keep forgetting that Yah shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. So in this war, He will equip you. Never forget that. Again, in Philippians, Philippians 3, Paul here to the church at Philippi, him talking about himself, not as, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect. But he says, but I follow after if I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. How many of us really in this walk know what we really have been apprehended for? And do you have this hope and, 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 and this thirst in you knowing that you have been apprehended for a certain purpose. You've been apprehended for a certain work to be a certain type of person. Even though you not have obtained, you not made it to that perfect yet, but having the conscience exercised to know that you have been apprehended, like Paul said. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that. If I can get an understanding now, of the reason why the Most High God has called me into this. If that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. And he says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. What do you do, Paul? Even though you have not apprehended the reason why you're in this race, why you're in this fight, why you're in this turmoil, whatever situation may be in, it's one thing I do, and it's one thing we should do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. Because our walk is constantly forward. If we're going to come out of something, we're going to walk away from it. 
And this walk with Christ is constantly ascending. Why? Why? Once we know we get so many years where this, this, this far up in the journey, we find ourselves just all of a sudden getting lackadaisical and little idle, and it will look but where we have traveled. Start looking back and looking down. We've not been apprehended to that. We're apprehended to go higher, 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 higher. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend for this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth those things which are before. There's a lot of things before. So the word is constantly, the Most High God would not have us to be ignorant. Because there are some exciting times ahead, saints. And they are before us. Reaching forth unto those things which are before us. He says, I press, and it is a press, toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Yah in Christ Jesus. We do have a high calling. We do not have a low calling. We have been apprehended to go higher. We're higher. We're a people higher than hatred. We're a people higher than bitterness. If per se, if you've been in a war of bitterness, if you've been delivered from bitterness, you've been delivered from anger, then now because you've been delivered, you've been through that experience, now you're higher than it. Come on. Because every victory gives us a little bit more maturity. Gives us a little bit more strength. Gives us a little bit more power. But if you don't immerse yourself in, how can you be a witness of it? How can you bask in His triumph? How can you bask in His victory? As He said, I made made you join heirs. If I rejoice, you rejoice with me. A lot of us don't want to rejoice. We want so much crap of this world. Who wants Yah's love? Who wants Yah's peace? Who wants Yah's long-suffering and Yah's gentleness? When all of our lives ordained children of Yah, the thing we are apprehended for back when we were yet in our sin, iniquity, and transgression, there was still something in the recesses of our being telling us, you are not of this. This is not you. This is not you. This is not you. This is not you. Because, you know, we can't put here and this is not you. This is not you. I've got to go, okay. I've got to go suppress this. I've got to go over here and get a little bit more, get more drugs here and a little bit more uh, whiskey here, whatever it may be. I've got to get something to suppress this. I'm running away from what I've been apprehended for. Until that one day, the Most High God put His foot down and said, no more. Burn you out of everything you ever owned. Leave you with the shirt on your back. Everything that you trusted in this world is all gone now. Brought you down to a low state. Brought you down to the ground. Brought you down to a place of humility. Brought you to an understanding of a great Elohim. Exercised your conscience to, to now know that you have offended your father. You've been all this time thinking that you're serving your father when the God of this world was not your father. There are children ordained for him. But the Most High Yah says, No, you are mine. I apprehended you from the beginning of time. Being for the yet the world was formed, you were in my mind. And he lets us know that in his word. And we won't take this journey to understand what we have been apprehended for. Many of us, you know, a lot of people come and sit in a seat in Sabbath and don't know the reason why they're there.
Hallelujah. Romans 6, 3 says, Know ye not? And we should know. It's actually saying, you should know this. That so many of, uh, of us, you always hear pastors saying, there's us, and there's the them. But we, the us, were baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized in Him. We're baptized into what? His death? Not our death? You know, it's amazing that we had to die to enter into His death. And we were baptized into Jesus Christ. Therefore, because we are buried with Him by baptism into death. Baptism, death, burial, resurrection. Therefore, we are buried, what? With Him, with Yeshua? Yes. By baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, how? By the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk now what? In newness of life. So we had to get into death. We had to go through death. And every day we've got to go through death to understand this newness of life. Life. But death is so much a, especially in this time and this hour, he's reigning. He's reigning. He's reigning. But death should not be reigning in us, ones that had the law written in our hearts and in our minds. Because death reigned from Adam unto Moses until the law came. Where it says death has no more dominion over you. Will we believe it? Will we walk in it? Will we immerse ourselves in it? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Everything that has been done, been done because of the one who loved you, the one that, yah gave as children to. Knowing this, that our old man, who? You mean there's an old man and a new man? That first Adam was a, of the earth? A living soul, huh? Second man Adam was made a what? Quickening spirit? Knowing this, we got to know this, our old man is crucified with him. So if that body died on the tree, guess who body died also with it? It was impaled. You know, arm yourselves with the same mind. Many people want to, you can go up and down Galen Road and see all these lighted crosses in people's front yard. And these people are so destitute of what they are doing. A symbol of death lighted in your front yard. Oh, a, a symbol of execution by the Romans lit up in glory in your front yard. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of what? That the body, the body of sin, is, it is relating to a what? Our old man. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin, your old man, might be, what this might? A hinging word there? Might be destroyed. And henceforth we, what? should not serve sin. For if any man goes back to the old man, goes back to the body of sin, and goes, guys, he goes back to the body of sin, he serves sin. Cut and dry. Cut and dry. Again, Ephesians. 
4. There we are. This I say therefore, and testify in the Master, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, having been alienated from the life of Yah through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of the heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned Christ and we have not learned Christ. If so be that you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Yeshua. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Why? Because he is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after Yah, the new man is after Yah, is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away a lie, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Why? Because we are members one of another. One thing beautiful about community, we learning of becoming of one member. Even though we are many people in this community, it's still one functioning organism. It's still one new man in action. This one new man produces. This one new man is living. This one new man speaks truth one with another. Not as some in times past speaking lies one to another. Speaking bitternesses and and grievances and whatever it may be. These antichrists that come in. Showing themselves that they were not of us at any time. Back in Colossians. Three. Tells us if we, if we be, if we then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of Yah. Set your affections on things above. Don't set your affections on things on the earth. Because the word says you are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in Yah. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then you shall also appear with Him in glory. How many of us have the hope of appearing with Him in glory? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When He comes back in flaming fire. So which position you want to be in in that day? You won't want to be with Him or you won't be on the earth? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because He's taking vengeance on all of them. Let Him take the vengeance. Not us. We are not a people of vengeance. We have a greater one who knows our needs. And at that time, and at that hour, He's going to supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. We're going to see how rich He is when everything that was done to Israel, Yah's people, is poured back on their own heads. We will be the people that's not appointed to wrath. We will be the people appointed to salvation. Let us be the ones in the body of salvation when that time comes. So when triumph executes itself, that we will rejoice with Him. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And there are members which we have upon this earth. Fornication. Uncleanness. 
Notice where they are, they're on this earth. Inordinate affections, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the children of Yah, for which things sake the children of Yah, the which things sake the wrath of Yah cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Don't lie one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, that body of sin, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Hallelujah. There is no man that hath power over the Spirit to retain the Spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death. Again, there is no no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. 2 Corinthians 13. This is, For though he, Yeshua, was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of Yah. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of Yah toward you. Where it says, examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. And a lot of us don't want to be proved. It's so one thing about the word when it comes forth to show you you. We think we got an adversary called the Hasatan. Wait till you meet you. And a lot of people have come in this ministry and met themselves and they said, ugh, I got to go. Because they love themselves too much. Light shines in darkness. The darkness comprehends it not. So the sin that, that is in them is stronger than the life which is trying to be put in them. So a hook in the jaw to the world is continually there. How many of us still have jook and these hooks in the jaw, hooks in the legs, hooks in the ears, hooks in the mouth, tethering us back to our former life as some kind of safety net we think we have. When things get heavy and things don't just seem like they should be in this walk, we, you know, we, we, we have a bridge to go back to. We can go back to our former days of old. All well, them things should have been burned, crumbled, exploded, whatever, I mean, done away with. Whew. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. No, ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be a reprobate. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to you that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. We can do nothing against the truth, but let us do it for the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. The only way you're going to come to the Father, you got to go, you got to know the truth. The truth will always lead you into life. The truth will give you the way to enter into life. 
Yeshua HaMashiach Himself, the truth, the way, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Him. No Buddha, no Krishna, no Brahma, none of these self-serving temporal gods can provide any sacrifice. Only one gave Himself. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, saints of the Most High Yah, children of the living Elohim, Yah is not dead. Yah has never been dead. Even though when there was a time when there was one on a tree and the host of hell were celebrating, even at that time when there was a body dead on a tree, a body laying in a sepulcher, Yah was not dead. Oh, hallelujah. We are children of the day. The day there is light. In the day there is life. In the day it is vigorous. Everything is flourishing. We are a people that give. One time we were a people that did take. We were as of our father the devil. We were there to steal, kill, and destroy. No longer our nature, saints of the Most High, Yah. No longer our way. Here we are still in the dead season, and don't forget it. I just pray that you stay in this fight. You don't know what you're missing. You don't know what's ahead. Let Yah reveal this unto you. Do you want to remain in darkness the rest of the days of your life? Coming in and tasting the heavenly good word of Yah and the heavenly powers and everything and then depart from it? And to have this constantly on your conscience and on your mind? The devil has such a hook in your mouth now that you cannot go back to that life now? That you have squandered it? That you can uh, crucify the Son of Yah again afresh? You only got one life to live. We only, we only know one who knows how to live it. These words are just more than knowing. Do you, do you, do you believe in the New Testament? And, and do you believe the Apostles' Doctrine? Well, how about you? Do you live it? Have you lived the living Word? It's more than just ink in a book. It's more than just doctrines up here dangling in your mind. It's more than just your little doctorates and your little whatever you have been ordained in this world with so many letters, whatever it may be. This is a word to be lived. You want to know life? Live this word. You want to be instructed? Be commanded. Commandments are life. Yahweh, Yeshua said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Why to many of us, many of you out there that may be on the, in the valley of decision, wanting to depart from the faith. Why? Why? You come into this and you've received love like you've never had in your life. You thought you had love with your natural family. But you under, you, this love that you come into this family pales that love which you thought you had with your natural family. Because it's real. It's real. It's real. Isn't it just not there and then it poofs? No, it's a love that continues. It's a love that consists. It's a love that's continually bearing fruit. It's continually giving. Not that crap out there in your former life where everything, everybody was a thief and a robber trying to get advantage over one another. Stay in the fight, saints. Stay in the fight. 
You don't know what you're missing down the road. How many victories. We, were, we get so caught up in, in all our failures. One thing that plagues the people of Yah, they think too much about their failures. Why you want to go back to your life? And look, you know how petty your life is. How weak you are. Why not look unto Him and look unto His life? That'll get your mind off yourself. So that's one of the biggest doors the Hasatan, you know, he, he, there, he, know, he knows how to study you. He knows at any time when you got your mind on yourself. The more we have our minds on ourselves, the less we have our minds on Him. Worry about our lives too much. That life should be gone. That life should continually, each and every day when you wake up, have that thought in your mind that that, 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 that body, that old man was up on that tree with Him. That old man was put into the ground with Him. And that you rose in the power of resurrection. This is a wonderful life, saints. A lot of you know this is a wonderful life. This is true life, real life. You know within yourselves without a doubt, why do you want to depart from it now? A lot of us have gone too far to go back now. We have immersed ourselves in this so much that it, 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 that it has pushed all the dross and everything. We don't know what other life to live now. I think that's a good reward. That's a good takeaway. Hallelujah. To stay in this that much that the former things of desire and lust is no longer there. Stay in this fight. Stay in this walk. Saints of the Most High, Yah, let us stand. Ah, blessed Heavenly Father, you have given us mighty things, Most High. You continually trying to reveal yourself to us. We don't need to, to, to believe the lies that the Hasatan has told of you and about you and your nature. We know the real you. Because you're in us. We in you. Let us continue to walk and to heed your word and your life and your experience. That will get us home. We've got to get home. We know we're strangers and pilgrims and we need to get out of this place. But in due time, we will make it. But we've got to suffer. We've got to endure. There's a lot of more perfection to take on. A lot of more maturing to take place. But we will endure most high because we want to get home. All things we commit, all things unto you in the warmth name Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you all saints. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Look at him looking.